Hey guys. Hello. So this week we're going to be talking about our new products, the AND8 and Mix8, and I'm going to do something at least a little bit impressive with them. Yeah. So first I'm going to answer Addie's questions about the circuit because just like you, she hasn't seen it yet and doesn't really know what, what it does and there's quite a bit there and it's not as complicated as you might think. What? So I'll I'll walk through this monster. He says this isn't complicated. It's like a freaking looks like a circulatory system, everybody. Okay. Ready? Are you ready? Wait, so which is which? That's This is the and eight. And okay, yeah. This is the mix eight. And these are going up on Tindy today. Today. Yep. Alright. So if you think it's cool what I do, go buy them. Please. Okay, what do you want to know? Everything. What in the world is going on? Okay, so the whole point of this video is just in these two items. Okay. Right? This is the new AND8. This is the new MIX8. And what's the AND8? The AND8 is eight AND gates. One side of the AND gates are controlled by the 595 shift register. The other sides are controlled by whatever input you want. Okay. So for the output bit to be high, the 595 pin for that one has to be high and the input has to be high. So in the case of input 0, the first bit of the shift register has to be high and the input bit has to be high mm -hmm. into input 0 and then output 0 will go high. Sounds complex. It's just Boolean logic. What's controlling the shift register once controlling the input? You can control it with anything that can turn pins on and off. In this case, I'm using um, an upcoming product of ours that's not released yet, the MIDI Shift, which is a microcontroller that converts MIDI into serial shift register data. Uh -uh. So I could chain more of these together because there's a shift, um, a toy maker style um, shift register chainable in and output, which means that you can have multiple AND eights together in a chain. Okay, wait. So let me backtrack. So that's the MIDI shift, right? That's Up an here, up upcoming yeah. thing, and it changes MIDI into serial. Yes. And then the serial goes into the AND input. Yep. Okay, and then uh, how's the sub? How's the shift register? controlled by that. It goes into the AND gate, right? Yeah, on a standard toy maker's header you have power, ground, clock, latch, and data in. Ground, uh, Power, ground, clock, latch, and data out. Okay. So you can daisy chain all sorts of these together. And you're just pushing bits into it one bit at a time. And it's going into the shift register or it's going into an AND gate? Shift register. Oh, okay. So it's going into the shift register and then from the shift register you can either, either daisy chain it to other AND 8s or not. In this case, not. Mm -hmm. So then where where is the input coming from for the AND 8s or the, the AND gates? So one side of the input, because each AND gate has two inputs, uh -huh. one side is from the output pins of the uh, 595 shift register. Okay. And the other one is user, so these eight here. Okay. And you do have, it looks like you do have user input too. I do in this application. Okay. And... So that sums up the AND8. Okay. How it works. Yep. And then over here we have the MIX8, which is a passive unbalanced summing mixer okay. with high accuracy resistors. All right, and what's that mean? It means you can take eight signals, yep. audio signals, other signals, yep. and it will mix them all to a single output equally. Cool. And it's always a good idea if you're hooking up audio to block the DC. Yep. So right. no direct DC current will go through this nice capacitor sitting here. Okay, yeah. Um, so this is a very simple thing. It's just nine resistors on there. Okay. But a very useful thing if you're dealing with multiple 
audio, audio sources, multiple, um, any analog stuff. Okay. And it's going to sum them all together. What makes this difference different from another summing mixer, like a? I don't know of any summing mixers that are this inexpensive and tiny and breadboard pluggable. Sweet. So it may be a novel thing. I don't know how many people will have a use for it, but I surely do. All right. So I made it. Cool. And I see that you have Jack Me uh, plugged into it. We have the VU. VU meter. Yeah, fit. the VU yeah. Me. Yep. And uh, that's showing our going to show our output um, potential voltage there. Mm -hmm. And up here we have a Jack Me for getting the audio out. Uh, and into the uh, uh, amplifier. Okay. And uh, up here we have a Toddic.com power supply, breadboard power supply, Very which easy. I don't know if you can buy right now, but they're awesome. Yep. And then, like we said, the MIDI shift, but you can't buy that yet. You will be able to in the near future. I'm still polishing off the uh, firmware. Okay, cool. So I see we've got power and grounds connected to each other. Yeah, there's lots of this knob. There's lots of power rail stuff coming along the bottom here. Mm -hmm. So I'm feeding 3.3 volts into my main power rails all along the bottom. Right. And uh, then we've got a variable one going across by the yellow wire, and I can adjust that with this potentiometer. Um, and that goes up on the reds on the other sides. Okay. And um, yeah. And then, so it looks like what you've done is repeated eight sets of this thing. Yeah. The basics here are that the top chip here is a 555 set up to oscillate. Mm -hmm. And you can set the frequency at which it oscillates with the potentiometer. And the bottom 555 in each set is a, a pulse lengthener. And, uh, it's how much it lengthens the pulse is determined by the variable voltage set here on this potentiometer that controls all 16 or all eight, eight. of the uh, pulse lengtheners. Okay. So you can tune each pair, um, the frequency of the oscillation independently, and you can tune the pulse width of all of them simultaneously. So the output of the pulse lengthener is the input of the user in of the AND8. Okay. So basically what you have with a 555 is short pulses are coming out of here and this is turning those short, short pulses into longer pulses. So what you essentially get is a square wave coming out at a specific frequency that you've set up by tuning here. And I've tuned them to musical notes. Mm -hmm. So you have this wire right here is turning on and off at a musical frequency. Mm -hmm. And that's turning on and off the input of one of the eight AND gates here. Mm -hmm. And nothing will get through the AND gate unless the pin goes high. That controls that input from the 595 shift register. So if that is high, this one goes high, the output turns on. This goes low, the output turns off. So now you've got the same thing coming in and going out, but only when this is turned on. Okay, so essentially with these eight different... I've tuned them all to notes in the pentatonic scale because the pentatonic scale is only five notes in an octave. Okay. So I was actually able to cover a, a mu nice spread. musical range and actually do something with it. All right, so these are constantly sending out the frequency constantly pegging the They're always this oscillating input. yeah and that's why it makes sense for this midi shift that when it turns this uh, shift register on and off that's when it's like a gate mm -hmm. it allows the note to come through there for and oh. gate i capiche yeah and then the, okay. the outputs of all the and gates are of course when they're turned on by the you know controller here they're turning on and off at a particular frequency and they're feeding through a resistor into our resistor network mm -hmm. or summing mixer getting some together then some they... together dc blocking here and then to the vu meter and the output audio output 
Okay. And then just to double check, so you were saying these were, okay, obviously ob they're oscillating at a certain frequency, mm -hmm. right? But obviously the time that they're on versus off. That's the duty is, cycle. Is the duty cycle, which can change without affecting the note. Yep. But it can affect the quality of the, of the note or the tone of the note. The character. Character yeah. of the note via this thing, because mm -hmm. this lengthens or shortens. Yep. Ah, uh, so I get it. Yep. Like a peach. All right, you ready for me to plug it in and show everybody what's up? Yeah, dude. Okay, so the first step to setting up something like this is to tune your oscillators. Okay. And I've got this one, we'll detune it. Um, let's see here. I'll Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right there. And you can see that the U meter comes up. Mm -hmm. So if I want to tune that to an A, I'd do that, but we actually do want the G sharp. There we go. Oh, that one's in tune. Yep. And I tune this to um, pentatonic F sharp. Eight notes of it. Cool. So each of these are eight notes, or or one note. Yep. One note. And they're always going. Okay. All right, so uh, the next thing here is I'll give you guys a, a sample of what you'd normally expect to hear out of some sort of 555 based sequencer. And this is, I'm just playing each one of the eight notes I've tuned to in a row. And this is kind of why people end up not using this kind of thing, because it's kind of, nasally mm -hmm. and doesn't have a lot of character so with the pulse width control so which is lengthening and which which is longer and which is shorter this is wider and that's just a tiny little pulse is what you'd normally get. So the more nasally, the s smaller the pulse. Kinda. It also depends on what else is going on. Okay. But in this case, yeah. We're getting closer to square as we get dialed in there. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's what the pulse with control does. It fattens up the duty cycle. Okay. I'm gonna move my play loop here show you guys the next little thing. Um, we can actually play whatever, right? So, and one thing that you notice that's unique here, normally with a 5-5-5 five, five, five synth, you can only play one note at a time, but right here, Two notes cross over each other and they play at the same time. Same here and over here as well. Mm -hmm. So we can actually do chords. And I'll show you some bigger chords. So we're actually playing three notes at a time in these places, and technically we can play all eight at once. It wouldn't sound very good musically, but we can, because mm -hmm. all the oscillators are going at once. It's full polyphony. You can turn on and off any of them through the and eight. All right, so let's play this whole sequence through, and then I'll add some, some background um, drums and um, just a little bit of bass synthesizer to it, just to bring out what it would actually sound like if you were to use this kind of stuff in a song.
that gives you the idea of what you can do with a pile of five five fives if you have a way to gate them and mix them together. Cool. See you guys next time. Ciao. Bye. We post videos all the time, so don't forget to subscribe and follow us on Twitter at TYMKRS.